What's up YouTube, Saf here on Super Saf TV, and this is my review of the Google Nexus 4, manufactured by LG, and it comes to you direct from Google as part of their Nexus series of devices. Now, if you want a bit more background information about the specs of this phone, I've done a quick spec comparison of this with the popular Samsung Galaxy S3, so you can check that out right here. Anyway, do hit that thumbs up button, and let's get straight into the Nexus 4 review. The size, design and build of this phone, I really, really like it. It looks very slick. I'm a big fan of the minimal design and black is my favorite color. So I think it looks really, really nice. It feels really comfortable in the hand. It feels very premium as well. I know a lot of people want uh, huge fans of the Samsung Galaxy S3, which felt a bit plasticky, but this feels really, really premium. Pretty standard size as well. Not the thinnest and lightest phone out there. It's uh, 139 grams. But if you quickly compare it to the S3, it's uh, slightly narrower and slightly shorter than the S3. Although the S3 is slightly thinner. Gorilla Glass 2 at the front and back. Now, obviously, having it at the back, you know, you've got that risk that if you do drop the phone, it could smash and it is slightly slippery as well. And uh, it also attracts quite a lot of fingerprints as well. So that's one thing to bear in mind. You've got a very nice texture on the back. Now, I did mention this in my unboxing. It's sort of, if when you hold it in certain angles, it looks just plain black. And in other angles, you can get this really, really nice texture at the back and it looks really, really slick. Edges are very smooth, fit nicely in the hand, very comfortable to hold, kind of soft plastic that they've used on the sides. Really, really nice there as well. Having a quick look around the phone, you've got the power button on the right hand side. At the top, you've got a mic as well as a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, volume rocker on the left hand side, micro SIM card insert point as well on the left hand side. And at the bottom, you've got the micro USB charging port as well as another mic. And uh, at the front, you've got the sensors uh, plus the front facing camera and uh, the rear camera at the back with the LED flash and you've also got the speaker at the back. Now this is slightly tinny, it's not the best speaker out there but it's pretty good. And at the front you've also obviously got the notification pulse light. Now that looks really, really slick as well. In terms of performance, you've got very, very high specs on this phone obviously. You've got the Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro quad-core 1.5 gigahertz processor with two gigabytes of RAM. So it really puts it up there in terms of the specs and it's very, very fast and smooth in my experience. I've not had any lag whatsoever. Smooth, snappy, especially with Android 4.2, really, really nice. Browsing the web, watching videos, and even demanding apps and games work absolutely fine. I've not had any issues whatsoever. The screen resolution, obviously you've got the 4.7 inch screen, true HD IPS plus capacitive touchscreen with 60 million colors. In terms of resolution, that's 1280 by 768. So now that's roughly 320 pixels per inch. Not the highest resolution out there, but very, very nice. Really, really uh, one of the best screens I've seen. It's very crisp, especially the text, very, very crisp text. Looks really, really nice, vibrant colors. One thing to note, obviously you've got the on-screen touch buttons, so they do take up some of that real estate, but do bear in mind that these do get hidden as well when you're watching things like video. So when you're watching a video, you are gonna be seeing a full 720p HD video. It's not gonna cut your screen because of those buttons because they are gonna be hidden, so do bear that in mind. Android Jelly Bean 4.2, obviously a big, big advantage of this device is that you've got stock Android coming to you directly from Google. You're not gonna have to go through any third party for updates, stock vanilla Android. Now that's obviously a key advantage of this device. Just to run you through a few key features of Android Jelly Bean 4.2, you've got the pull down trays. When you pull down with one finger, you're gonna get the notification drop down. And if you pull down with two fingers, then you're gonna get your quick settings, things like brightness and Wi-Fi shortcuts to those, which is really, really useful. You can also switch between these two using the top right hand button there as well. The gesture keyboard is obviously another key feature on here as well. Now it's really useful when you're using with one hand, you can simply swipe your finger across the keyboard and it's also going to predict what you're sort of typing as well so it's really really useful there as well the camera has some key updates as well you can adjust settings by simply touching and holding the screen and that lets you change things like your flash and exposure etc so really really useful there you can also swipe the screen to see your recent pictures and you've got the 360 panorama mode as well, which you've probably heard a lot about. I'm not a huge fan of the panorama on phones, but it's a really kind of fun thing to play around with. Lock screen widgets is another feature. What you can do now is before you unlock the device, you can simply swipe left or right, and you can get to things like the camera or your calendar, and you can also add the widgets on there, so it's really useful there as well. Got Google now with your cards, appointments, weather, flight information, etc. And I've not used this too much myself, but it is quite useful here as well. The voice search is more accurate now as well. Well, will it be raining tomorrow? Yes, the forecast for tomorrow in Leicester is 57 degrees with rain. So even with my lesser accent, it really picks up 
everything quite detailed. I mean, it still does switch to Google uh, search rather than giving the answer straight away quite a few times, but it's really, really improving. The cameras, you've got the 1.3 megapixel front facing camera, obviously really good for conference calls, etc. Decent quality and the rear facing camera is an 8, 8 megapixel camera with LED flash. That's going to film 1080p HD at 30 frames a second. Pretty good, not the, again, not the best camera out there, but pretty good, uh, sort of on par with the S3 camera, I'd say. Some of the points about this device, you've got the lithium polymer 2100 milliamp battery. Now, one thing to note is this is not removable, so you can't get a spare battery of, for it or anything like that. It is enclosed within the device. In terms of performance, it gives you a good day's worth of usage on general usage, so that's not a problem. It's not an exceptional battery or anything like that, but it's not bad either. It's going to give you a good day's worth of usage. For the US viewers, obviously, LTE is not enabled on this device. I've read some places that you can do some mods to get it enabled on certain carriers etc i don't know too much about it but generally speaking it's not an lte device you've got nfc with wireless charging out of the box now i know the s3 you can get a plate for it etc to be able to enable wireless charging but this out of the box is going to give you wireless charging so if you do have a wireless charging dock you can charge this wirelessly another thing to note is that you've got the 8 and 16 gigabyte versions only no sd card expansion now i know this has been a negative for a lot of people out there who want the extra storage options so uh, that's something to bear in mind you've only got the 8 and 16 gigabyte versions and google did have with the nexus 7 you had initially just the 8 and 16 and then they released the 32 gig version so i'm hoping that they will have a 32 gig version at least of this device pretty soon to summarize i think this is a great phone overall a few shortcomings yes but i think the price makes up for any negatives that this device has i mean for the 8 gigabyte version you're looking at 239 pounds or $299, 16 gigabyte version, £279 or $349. Now, that is an exceptional price. However, that is only if you can get hold of one of these. I know a lot of people have been disappointed because there's been a huge demand for this and it's been out of stock in the Play Store for some time now and it does only come in stock for a certain period of time and then bam, it's out of stock again. I'm not sure how many Google have actually sold to date, but I mean, I'm sure they should have been anticipating the high demand for this device. And hopefully, I'm hoping Google will sort that out soon because it, it is a shame that a lot of people not being able to get this handset because it, it is a really, really great handset. So that was my review of the Nexus 4. What are your views on it? Do drop me a comment below and let me know what you think. Hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button. It really does help me out. Why not subscribe to the channel? Got plenty of tech videos coming up on here. Thank you for watching once again. This is Saf on Super Saf TV and I'll see you next time.